Afternoon folks and uh, welcome into Colour for Engagement, Orientation and Wayfinding webinar which will be presented by leading Australian expert Dr Zena O'Connor today who's beaming in uh, to be with us from Sydney. So hello there Zena. Hi there everyone. Uh, now Zena's previously presented uh, seminars for Rosine so it's great to have her back with us today. Before we start I'll just run through a quick bio for you. Um, Zena is an independent research consultant who holds a PhD from the University of Sydney, master's degree in design and a bachelor's degree also. Zena has worked with a wide range of organisations in commercial, government and academic sectors and uh, delivers evidence-based insight and research projects and seminars relating to colour and applied design. And, and the built environment, colour psychology, colour and logo design and branding, visual literacy and colour mapping studies. So I think it's safe to say that uh, Zena is suitably qualified on the subject matter today. Um, now I'll let her jump in and just say a few words as well before we get into it. Hi everyone, I'm saying hello to you all from sunny Sydney. Um, I hope you're uh, enjoying the restrictions as they lift from COVID-19 and I particularly hope that you enjoy this, this seminar today. I'll hand it back to Rod. Great, thanks. So uh, for today's presentation, uh, Zena's kindly embedded the audio in the, um, in the presentation so we know exactly how long it'll run today. What that means is we will have time for a live Q&A at the end of the session. Um, and as with all webinars, it will be available on our website in a couple of days to view as well. So um, we'll just get straight into it. Now I've just got to click on a few things here and um, we'll just cut out of our web cams and mute ourselves and we'll be underway. This presentation explores the impact of colour and contrast with a particular focus on colour for engagement, orientation and wayfinding in aged care and dementia care. My name is Zena O'Connor and the content of this presentation is based on my research as well as my consultancy work. The learning outcomes from this webinar involve identifying the ways in which the attributes of colour can be modified to improve environmental visual literacy. How colour contrast can enhance environmental visual literacy and improve orientation and wayfinding in the built environment. And also an understanding of the ways in which colour contrast can be used to address the needs of people with declining visual capacity. Effective colour design is imperative in healthcare, aged care and dementia care for reasons beyond aesthetics. Colour design can be strategically used to improve engagement and just as importantly, to improve environmental visual literacy and enhance orientation and wayfinding. In achieving these aims, effective colour design can also assist with the safe operation of daily activities. In this context, colour design includes all hue variations inherent in construction materials, finishes, textures, painted surfaces, flooring, fixtures and fittings. Some of these are subject to regulation in healthcare and aged care. And it's good to remember that colour design is always impacted by changes in ambient lighting and the intrusion of glare. Older people and people living with dementia tend to experience declining visual capacity and this impacts their experience of the built environment. The human visual system undergoes change as we age. Specifically, luminance contrast, that is light dark contrast, as well as colour sensitivity decline from middle age onwards. This is compounded by issues like macular degeneration and cataracts which are often experienced by older people. Have a look at the three images on the screen and squint your eyes to replicate declining visual capacity. What elements stand out in each image? 
does the color design in each image make it easy or hard to identify and distinguish important elements like handrails? Are the tones of the walls and the floor different or do they tend to blend into each other? Is there strong color, color contrast? And do the interiors seem bland or is there some level of visual variety in terms of color? Developing effective color design for healthcare and aged care, as well as dementia facilities, requires an understanding of the ways in which color contrast can be harnessed to enhance the interface between users and the built environment. While hue is important, variations in light dark contrast and saturation levels have a greater impact in terms of how easily we read and make sense of the built environment in a meaningful way. So I'll do a quick recap of colour theory. Colour has three key attributes. The first of these is hue, which is the general category of colour Im implied by terms like red, green, brown, orange and blue. Tonal va value is the lightness or darkness of colour. It's also referred to as tone and value. Saturation is the level of purity or colour intensity, which can vary along a continuum from weak chromatic intensity through to full chromatic intensity. Every colour has an inherent hue, tonal value and saturation level. Tonal value refers to variations of lightness and darkness of colour. In design and the built environment, variations in tonal value can help to achieve specific outcomes. Variations of tonal value can contribute to mood and ambience. Strong contrast can attract or divert attention and create focus. Strong contrast can also improve environmental visual literacy. So having a look at these images on the screen, variations in tonal value can draw attention to different elements in each image, from the figure and horse sculpture on the left to the word attention on the right. Saturation has been found to have as great, if not more impact as hue in the built environment. Depending on context, bright saturated colors attract attention. So strong saturation contrast can be used to draw attention to key design details, which can then be used as landmarks for orientation and wayfinding. Eye tracking studies show that when we scan a scene, our attention is automatically captured by movement and areas of strong contrast. Attention is also drawn to human figures, faces and detailed visual information. We try to make sense of this detailed visual information. It's good to understand this, especially in respect to people with declining visual capacity. Weak contrast makes it difficult to identify key interior design elements. If you look at the image on the left and squint your eyes to mimic declining visual capacity, what elements are easy to distinguish? Unfortunately, the bath, the vanity, the toilet and the floor all tend to blend in together, making these features difficult to distinguish. Bright lighting and glare reflectance add additional visual problems. In this respect, Racine always indicates gloss levels in their paint fan decks to help mitigate this problem. Plus every Racine colour has an LRV value that is a light reflectance value. Black has a low LRV value of 0%, while white has a high LRV value of 100%. Visual perception involves memory and cognitive processing, and we mentally construct what we see. Color contrast plays an integral role in the perception of design and the built environment. 
colour contrast, that is light dark contrast and strong hue and saturation contrast, allow us to differentiate contours, depth, shape and objects. In the built environment, that means that we can differentiate windows, doors, walls, hallways and in dif different interior zones. In this image, if we squint our eyes to mimic declining visual capacity, similarity of tonal value and saturation levels make it difficult to distinguish the floor from the walls, the wall from the column, and the door at the end of the room. So what is visual literacy? Well, if literacy is the ability to read and write, and visual literacy is the, the ability to read and understand visual imagery, then environmental visual literacy is defined as the ability to read and make sense of design cues embedded in the built environment. And you'll notice with the image at the right that increasing the tonal value contrast and colour contrast makes it easier to distinguish the design elements in the room. Environmental visual literacy depends on functional visual perception and cognitive processing. However, for people with declining visual capacity, declining mental capacity, memory lapse and various forms of dementia, perceiving and understanding the environment can become highly problematic. Inappropriate environmental design is one of the two most common triggers for severe behaviours in people living with dementia the other being identified pain issue. So as designers, that is our challenge, to make the environment easier to read for people living with dementia. Environmental visual literacy can be negatively impacted by too much visual stimuli. Cognitive overload can result in the misinterpretation of design details and features, making an environment unsafe. So when there are too many design details, colours and patterns, users can become confused about their environment and the environment may become unsafe for them. There are a number of strategies that can help to improve environmental visual literacy. The first of these is to use strong colour contrast, preferably a 75 differential between the lightest colours and the darkest colours. A second strategy is to mitigate glare and reflectance. These strategies help to make the environment easier to read and understand in a meaningful way. Moving on to colour design strategies for orientation and wayfinding, colour contrast as well as murals and super graphics support orientation and wayfinding initiatives beyond regular signage. Pathways, districts, zones and landmarks can all be created using variations in colour contrast, as well as visual props and cues like murals and super graphics. Research indicates that red and warm colours attract attention and draw people in. This colour strategy can be used to create landmarks and identify different interior zones and pathways. Compare these two images. Adding a mural or a feature wall in warm colours changes the impact of the hallway as per the image on the right hand side. The warm colours of the mural attract attention, they appear welcoming and they draw the visitor closer. Here we have different examples of the ways in which warm colours are used to attract attention, create a welcoming space and draw the visitor closer in. So on the left hand side, we have the sunny lounge with its bright yellow wall, creating a welcoming space. In the middle image, we have an orange doorway indicating a specific location. And on the right hand side, we have warm colours creating a warm welcoming lounge area with a red wall at the end, drawing the user closer and further into that space. Colour contrast, murals, super graphics and feature walls can be strategically used to create particular zones, landmarks and pathways. On the left hand side, a two storey super graphic provides a large scale orientation device at an aged care facility. 
similarly on the right hand side, a bright yellow wall provides a, a welcoming signal, enticing people to go towards the dining room. This is in a very modest aged care facility in Sydney. Coloured doors are now a common feature in aged care, and these enable residents to find their own room easily. Different coloured doors also act as landmarks, providing other residents with orientation markers. Feature walls, as well as memory boxes installed at the entrance to a resident's room, hold mementos of their early life and can act as both a memory boost and a visual cue for wayfinding. In healthcare, aged care, as well as commercial and hospitality environments, use colour to create different zones, but avoid using too many distinct colour schemes. Multiple colour schemes can become confusing and difficult to remember. Also, use colour schemes that are relatively familiar and have straightforward names that are easy to identify, remember and communicate to others, irrespective of age and cultural background. Colour coding on different levels in a multi-level facility provides relatively easy visual cues for patients, staff and visitors across healthcare and aged care. Colour coded and large scale signage at every key intersection throughout a building assists with orientation and wayfinding. In respect to colour strategies that enhance engagement and wellbeing, it's good to remember that in healthcare and aged care, white, grey and hospital green are often perceived to be cold, clinical, depressing and unwelcoming. Avoid colour design that is primarily white coupled with grey and green. This makes a space seem cold and clinical, adding to anxiety levels. Colour variety and cheerful, joyful colours are perceived as welcoming and friendly. Welcoming pops of saturated colour can be used nested within a neutral colour scheme. This adds colour contrast as well as visual variety, offsetting feelings of anxiety and fear by users of the space. This interior features sky blue as well as a range of warm saturated hues, sunny yellows, pinks, mauves, and these contrast with the neutral colour scheme and enliven the interior. Stronger, more saturated colour in aged care not only adds a cheerful edge, but is more readily perceived by people with declining visual capacity. Remember that luminance contrast, that is light dark contrast, as well as colour sensitivity declined from middle age onwards. Colour design that is perceived as cold, clinical, unwelcoming and hospital-like can have negative impacts on patients, visitors and hospital staff. Research suggests that colour design strategies that feature familiar and home-like colours can help to reduce anxiety and enhance a sense of well-being in healthcare and aged care. Tonal value contrast can be tweaked so that it's used to enhance environmental visual literacy in these environments. Familiar and home-like colour schemes are particularly important in hospice design, where quality of life is a key aim. Colour schemes that feature hue similarity tend to feel more comfortable, while colour schemes that don't share hue similarity, but which exhibit contrasts of hue, saturation and tonal value, tend to feel more energising. We also tend to feel more comfortable when the allocation of tonal values within an interior space matches that of nature. That is, with darker colours at floor level, intermediate tones around the space, placed on the walls around the space, and with lighter tonal values at ceiling level. This placement of tonal values reflects the tonal value allocation in nature. Both of these images feature that allocation of tonal values, with darker tonal values at floor level and much lighter tonal values at ceiling level. The representation of nature in interior spaces 
tends to have positive impact and can enhance feelings of comfort, relaxation, well-being and creativity. The colours of nature and imagery that reflects nature tend to have a similar effect, albeit not as strong as a walk in the park or time spent in the garden. This evidence-based approach is underpinned by universal preferences for biophilia, a term first coined by Fromm to represent our strong attraction and sense of affinity for nature. Wilson suggested that we're hardwired to seek out connections with nature. And Kaplan and Kaplan's restoration theory suggested that people suffering from attentional fatigue and associated stress can concentrate better after spending time in nature or viewing nature. In healthcare and aged care, add a sense of nature with nature inspired colour schemes, as well as murals and super graphics that feature nature. These also act as landmarks for orientation and wayfinding, either on the inside or outside in the garden. Nature inspired murals and design elements feature throughout this facility in lounge areas and hallways. These murals encourage engagement and provide landmarks for orientation. A patient centred approach was applied in the design of this hospital ward. Views of nature, bright saturated colour and nature inspired graphics contrast with the neutral colour scheme. The aim being to enhance patient experience and help to improve recovery rates. Design for Dementia has progressed to design that focuses on and supports quality of life. People living with dementia often have difficulty screening out high levels of environmental stimuli and research recommends reducing disturbing stimulation and enhancing useful stimulation. Research also found that residents were less verbally aggressive when sensory input is more understandable. So a supportive and meaningfully designed environment can help those living with dementia and reduce triggers for aggressive behaviour. Aside from cognitive impairment and memory issues, people living with dementia may experience a number of visual issues that impact their perception of the built environment. Visual processing may be slower. They may misinterpret visual information. So black mats may look like holes, blue floors might look like water or a puddle. And geometric patterns may be perceived as sharp objects. They may experience sensory overload, double vision or ghosting. And visual hallucinations may be experienced by some who have difficulty discriminating between real and imaginary scenarios. From her experience living with dementia, Agnes Houston, author and dementia campaigner, summarizes the visual issues experienced by people living with dementia as, your eyes see, but your brain doesn't interpret the information immediately. Agnes's video provides insight into some of the challenges experienced by people living with dementia. Strong colour contrast is particularly important for environments designed for people living with dementia. Strong colour contrast improves environmental visual literacy and it helps to make details easier to distinguish. When you compare these two images, the image at right features a mural in warm colours at the end of the hallway, acting as the landmark and drawing people closer. Handrails and skirtings are in a contrasting dark brown, making these easier to distinguish and to use. Strong colour contrast, around 75% differential between key design elements like handrails, doors, walls and so on, help to optimise orientation, wayfinding and the intuitive use of the environment. Notice in the image at the right that the doors and walls at the far end of the room are the same colour, they're white, and it makes the doors difficult to distinguish. Light reflectance values can help you to achieve 
strong colour contrast. Light reflectance values can be used to determine contrast levels between different design details and painted surfaces. Light reflectance values work on a scale of zero to 100%, where 0% is black and 100% is white. All Racine paint colours have an LRV value indicated on every colour sample, on Fandex and online. Strong contrast also helps those who experience colour blindness, as strong tonal value difference will help them differentiate design details irrespective of hue. In the image on the screen, we have Racine Tranquil, a light blue which has an LRV value of around 87%. Alongside it is Racine St Kilda, which has an LRV value of around 9%. The contrast differential between these two colours is 78%. You may wish to try this for yourself. Find some colours and check their LRV value. Keep selecting colours until you've found two that contrast by 75%. Research indicates that environmental design can help residents to maintain dignity, a sense of competence and joy through the use of familiar design archetypes, home-like colours, furniture and fittings. Privacy, personalisation and an easily understood environment is associated with reduction in agitation and aggression. Colour variety and bright saturated colours are recommended and these can be nested within a simple overall colour design. Effective colour design can minimise the institutional nature of aged care and dementia facilities and help contribute to an improved sense of joy, playfulness and well-being. Colour variation and saturated colour accents can provide helpful, gentle stimulation, plus differentiate different zones and spaces. Use colour contrast to distinguish design details like handrails, but balance colour design to avoid overstimulation. Dementia patients often use visual cues to orientate themselves when they feel confused. In the image on the left, a super graphic defines a comfortable seating area. While in the image on the right, a large scale interactive super graphic adds a sense of playfulness while providing a distraction from the exit. Research indicates that it's best not to camouflage doorways and exits, as this can add to a sense of confusion. An option is to provide a visual diversion instead. An interior streetscape has been installed in this aged care facility. This streetscape creates a new reality based on familiar memories and design archetypes. Strong saturated colours and colour contrast are nested within a neutral colour design. These strong saturated colours and contrasting colours are used to distinguish different landmarks and zones. Here's another example of an interior streetscape installed in a dementia care facility. Notice the familiar design archetypes and the careful use of colour contrast allocated throughout the space. You may also notice the backlit mural on the ceiling. I hope you've found this presentation useful and have gained additional insight into the ways in which colour and colour contrast can improve engagement, orientation and wayfinding in aged care and dementia care. Thank you. Okay, that's fantastic. Thanks, uh, Zena. I think we'll just try and click our webcams back on. We've got a little bit of time, 10 or 15 minutes for question and answer.
Apologies for the little technology glitch there at the beginning. That was quite simply um, that was quite simply me clicking the wrong button to start the presentation uh, start the presentation off. And uh, and yeah, that's what you get when you let a uh, let the paint guy look after the technology. So um, yeah, we'll do better next time. So um, so have I got you there, Zena? Yes, you have. I'm here. Oh, great. Great, cool. I uh, I still have a few glitches going on on my screen, so I can't quite see you. But we have had a few questions come in, so what I'll do is I'll just um, I'll uh, roll through them, and we'll see how we go uh, over the next ten or fifteen minutes. Okay. Um, so I know we talked about the LRV um, uh, levels of the colours, but are there uh, mm -hmm. questions coming from Carmen? Are there any specific LRV guidelines for aged care facilities? So I'm not sure what the guidelines are in, in New Zealand, but I can certainly speak to the guidelines here in Australia. And the guidelines tend to uh, suggest that a, a strong level of contrast is ideal. I mentioned that differential of 75% differential between the lightest colour and the darkest colour. And that actually dovetails in well with the recommendations for people who may be colourblind. And of course, um, that represents a, a proportion of, of the population. So 75% um, differential does seem quite a, a, a large differential, but it is a differential that uh, will basically guarantee that design details stand out. You don't need to apply that differential to absolutely every aspect of uh, an overall colour scheme for an interior just apply it to those details that are important, like handrails and so on. Fantastic. Um, so another question is coming from Angela. Uh, can you please tell us how pattern works in aged care environments? Okay, so patterns obviously uh, enrich an interior design and, and they're very important. Um, however, in terms of interiors for people living with dementia, patterns can become problematic. Um, I th on screen was an image of a, a couch um, situated on carpet, and both the couch and the carpet seem to um, exhibit a very similar pattern, textile design in, in both the carpet and the couch. Um, that can then become problematic, um, even for, for, for any of us, we might not notice the difference between the couch and, and the carpet. Um, for an older person with declining visual capacity, it becomes problematic, and even more so for a person living with dementia. Now, a person living with dementia can experience lots of different visual challenges, and there's a saying in dementia circles that when you've met one person with dementia, you've met one person with dementia. And the meaning behind that is that every person who has dementia experiences different challenges. So some people may interpret a, uh, a geometric pattern, for example, as being kind of sharp and spiky. So they may not want to sit on um, a couch that's got a geometric pattern on it. But that kind of uh, visual perception may not impact the, the, their neighbour who is also living with dementia. So patterns are important, they do add a level of visual interest in interior design, but especially for aged care um, interiors, we do need to be a little more uh, restrained, I guess. Uh, fantastic. Uh, now, are there any uh, question from, uh, another one from Carmen, are there any colour ranges that have a negative impact on dementia or aged care patients? Um, okay, so again, it's hard to put a call on that because people living with dementia all experience different visual challenges. However, I would recommend that you steer away from um, too many contrasting colours, too much visual variety in terms of colour. It will make an interior just seem too visually busy. And so it's important to minimise visual stimulation as well as auditory stimulation 
for people living with dementia. So if you keep that in mind, in terms of colour design, as well as the use of textiles and fabrics and patterns and so on. So you'll notice from the slides that I did suggest saturated pops of colour. So that is just saturated um, accents of colour, if you like, all of which are nested within an essentially neutral colour scheme. Great. Uh, now, a question from Daniela. Uh, what do you think about wayfinding lines or signage on the floor? Look, I think they're a great idea, actually. I'm a very, very visual person. If I'm going into a new environment, um, you know, it, it obviously helps to find your way about if there are lines on the floor. You follow the red line to get to the cash desk or the green line to get to the exit. So, look, they're, they're very simplistic. Um, but they work. And so, uh, yeah, look, I'm all for them. You may find some architects and designers that find them overly simplistic, um, but look, they work. At the end of the day, they work. So, yeah, that, that's my take on, on coloured coding lines on the floor. Great. Now, there's actually a couple of questions come in. Uh, one from Jennifer and one from Sonia that seem to be the same here. So it's about... Um, camouflage exits so I'll just yeah. get the just both of them so the difference between camouflaging doors and creating a diversion at a doorway mm. for sufferers okay so camouflaging a doorway is where you'll have an, an exit door that residents aren't allowed aren't allowed to go through and it's painted over with uh, say a bookcase now um, that's been applied in quite a lot of dementia care facilities but the issue is, is that um, a resident living in that dementia care facility will notice that people are coming and going through that bookcase. Um, they'll, they'll sort of twig that it's a door or they'll twig that it's something quite odd. So I've heard from uh, people that have actually in, um, incorporated that kind of visual camouflage in dementia care facilities that it actually adds to, um, to to sort of, I guess, a level of um, confusion, uh, which can lead to, to anger um, by, by, camouf color, by camouflaging a doorway in that way. Um, the, the resident will see people going in and out and they wonder why they can't go in and out. So the idea now is to create a visual distraction. Um, instead of camouflaging the door completely, create a visual distraction that partially camouflages the door, but perhaps directs uh, the resident's attention elsewhere. So um, paint some kind of uh, appealing mural on the doorway, but have right next to it something that actually attracts their attention and engages them so that as they're work, working, sorry, walking towards that doorway, they'll, they'll be, their attention will be distracted by whatever is installed alongside. So that's the difference between um, the downsides of camouflaging the doorway and the ups upsides of installing some kind of visual distraction alongside the doorway. Great, now I've got a really interesting one here for you. Uh, so a mm -hmm. question around the use of interior, this is from Emma, the use of interior streetscape uh, triggering familiarity and shared homes. So it seems to be mm. that this is based on the assumption that all residents are from the same cultural background, location and privilege. Yes, an absolutely. Yeah, look, that's a very, very good question. Um, I've seen a couple of these uh, installed streetscapes. The one, the first one that I showed you in the uh, webinar was from a place here in Sydney. And the responses to that have been very positive, but yes, the, um, the, the cohort of residents that live there are all from a similar generational group and also from a similar cultural group. So in terms of the design of that streetscape, it suits that uh, uh, group particularly well. Um, that may not be the case in other um, aged care facilities where you'll have a range of perhaps different generations as well as different cultural backgrounds. So yes, it, it, it is an issue. Um, another installation that I've seen of a streetscape is in one in America. 
and this particular one in America was in a small little town, a really gorgeous little village, um, although they don't call them villages there, um, really gorgeous little place that had those cute little um, shops and, and, and houses all made from timber and looking, looking gorgeous. And so the streetscape that was installed visually replicated that little town. A lot of the residents in the dementia facility were from that town. So it, the, the, the streetscape was very familiar to them. But yes, that's a very good point, trying to des design a streetscape that suits the residents of that facility. It might suit 80%, but maybe not uh, 20%. So it's a very good point. Great. Now, uh, this is an interesting one. We've, we've talked about colour. Uh, now, from Dilmini in uh, Melbourne, we've got one around natural light and artificial lighting. Well, how does natural light and artificial lighting affect the colours for aged care and dementia care design? Okay, that's an important point. Well, natural light and artificial light always impact uh, colour schemes anyway. You know, warm lights can kind of bring up the warm undertones in a colour scheme. Cool lights can bring up the cool undertones in a colour scheme. And it, and both of those different types of ambient uh, um, artificial lighting will have an impact on how we perceive the colour scheme. Um, so we can offset uh, variations in natural light and ambient lighting by tweaking the warm and cool colours in terms of, of artificial lighting. Um, but just on that point of lighting, uh, there are a number of facilities in, 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 sorry, in Europe which are now using circadian rhythm lighting um, and installing that in dementia facilities. Um, and it's a, it's a fabulous idea, actually. You, you may have noticed this on, uh, on international flights where the interior of the plane, um, the lighting matches the time of day that, that you're meant to be experiencing. So they'll, they'll change the lighting at night to sort of encourage people to go to sleep and change the lighting in the morning to kind of get everyone waking up um, ready for their breakfast, irrespective of whether it's 1 a.m. in the morning or or 10 a.m. in the morning. So they're introducing this circadian lighting into dementia facilities. And their finding research indicates that um, residents are more likely to fall in line with that regular routine of the day where they're waking up at, um, at what should be kind of morning and breakfast time and feeling sleepy and going to bed um, in line with the change in circadian lighting to encourage uh, the, the perception that it's night time. It also helps with the nighttime wandering that often happens in um, dementia facilities and also the, the daytime napping. So yeah, so uh, ambient lighting, natural lighting um, uh, and artificial lighting can all have an, an impact in aged care and dementia care, definitely. Great. Now we'll, we'll roll through another couple uh, before we sign off. Uh, I've got one here from Doug. It should light switches and socket outlets be in contrast to the wall? Yes, absolutely. Um, definitely for aged care and also for dementia care. Um, you know, at the moment, things like light switches um, and power sockets uh, come in a range of colours, and sometimes those colours are very strong in terms of colour. I imagine it, it, it's only a matter of time before we get a much greater range of colours. So um, we won't necessarily need to have, you know, a bright red um, light socket, a, a power socket, or a bright, you know, or a black um, power socket. There'll be a range of colours, and we can incorporate uh, a, a kind of more, better, more aesthetically pleasing um, colour design with that greater range of sockets. Um, light switches and, and power sockets. So yeah, definitely, they're a great idea. Um, yep, absolutely, for aged care and, and, and for dementia care, yes, definitely. Uh, one in from Corinia. Are there any colours that colourblind residents may see differently, causing them to be more aggressive or emotionally unwell? What colours would be best for colourblind residents and that are still so, helpful for residents? Yeah, that's a really good question. So colourblind people, generally the greatest uh, proportion of people who are colourblind um, have difficulty seeing red and green 
uh, colours, hues. So if um, if design details um, uh, feature red and green in similar tones, that's where things get problematic. Um, however, what can be done is that you can use tonal value, variations in tonal value to um, overcome uh, col those colour blindness type challenges. So uh, you may still use red and green details, but instead of using red and green at similar tonal levels, you have one that is much lighter and one that is much darker. And by having that um, strong differential in terms of tonal value, it, it will help to make design details stand out better. It's like watching, um, I'm not colourblind, but I understand that if you're watching a, a soccer match, for example, and the team is wearing bright red, one team is wearing bright red shirts and they're playing on green grass and the other team is wearing green shirts playing on green grass, then it's very difficult for people with colour blindness to distinguish those different teams. However, if um, uh, tonal value, light versus dark tonal value, was incorporated into the shirts of those, those teams, the two teams would be easily differentiated on that same green grass. Great. Now, I'll, I'll, we'll just go for one more question. This is an interesting one as well, given that we're talking about uh, colour and tones. Mm -hmm. uh, this is from Georgina, um, takes a slightly different um, angle on it. Do you feel that textural surfaces have an added value to help the elderly? Uh, well, it depends on the type of texture, I guess. Look, um, textured surfaces uh, can be very appealing. Um, there are a lot of upsides to textured sur surfaces. They can absorb sound. So that, of course, is, is um, a very good point, especially for dementia care facilities. The idea being to try and minimise unhelpful stimulation and visual stimulation as well as auditory stimulation can be problematic. So if a facility has a lot of um, hard surfaces, um, sound will just bounce off those hard surfaces, making the interior um, unpleasant for anyone, let alone somebody with dementia. Um, sound is just bounced around and the, and the interior becomes very noisy. So textured surfaces, um, and especially textured services that absorb sound. Yep, great, fantastic. Um, they can also add visual interest. And uh, so, yeah, definitely, there's, there's a lot in the way of upsides for textured surfaces, definitely. Well, uh, that's fantastic, Zeno. I think we'll, we'll wrap it up there. That's been a, um, a really interesting uh, presentation for us all. Uh, thanks so much for um, uh, beaming in from Sydney today. Um, apologies to everyone out there for our little technical uh, glitch or false start at the beginning. Um, for those who are wanting to uh, re-watch that, we'll trim that off and, um, and start from the beginning of the presentation once it's uh, up and ready to go on our, on our website. So um, thanks again, Zena. It's been great Thank having you. you with us. And no doubt we'll, we'll catch up with you again as well at some time. Fantastic. Uh, Thank so you. Bye, everyone. Great. All the best to you all out there. Uh, stay safe and uh, bye for now.